Welcome back. It's to Plots Politics. The Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, has asked the federal government to immediately release all welfare materials provided to cushion the effect of COVID-19 in the country. The NLC made the demand in a statement signed and issued on Monday by its president, Ayuba Waba, in Abuja, who said that the directive also applies to state governments, which it accused of being chief corporates in hoarding of the palliatives. Mr. Waba also added that government officials cannot afford to create a scenario that precipitates mass unrest. To kickstart this conversation, we have joining us Mr. Achike Chude, who is a public affairs commentator. Good evening, Mr. Chude. Okay, I'm sure we will get to hear his voice. He's already on standby. We also have with us the Deputy President of NLC, Mr. Amechi Azugini. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. You're welcome. Yeah, and uh, interestingly, we also have the Deputy President of NLC, Mr. Joe Ajero. Oh, let me call you what we call you when we are together. Comrade Joe Ajero. Good evening, sir. Good evening, you Well done. Yeah. Let me start with the public affairs commentator, then I will come back to the labor leaders. Now, I I've listened to you, Mr. Chike, over time. In fact, in the recent time, when you talked about these palliatives, where you tried to explain that this is beyond looting, this is beyond greed, that this is a big question calling for attention that the Nigerian state is indeed, or the people are indeed hungry. What do you make out of this call by NLC? Will he give it a bite for these people to release these palliatives? Well, I, I think it's a matter of, um, uh, I, I think it is uh, uh, akin to, the call is, by, you know, is akin to closing the bank, bank, bank door after the horse has bolted. Uh, I think it's too late in the day for that call. It is a good call, uh, you know, in case some other states are also hoarding the same palliatives. But I think, you know, it is uh, something that should have been done before. But perhaps the argument might be that they did not know that um, these things were being hoarded. I'm sure a lot of Nigerians were surprised at these things, that these uh, palliatives were, were, you know, in uh, various states, in the warehouses and all that. You know, but um, I, like I said, uh, the people themselves have decided to take matters into their hands. They did not have to wait for the NLC to give that, uh, that uh, instruction or that advice to the government. Uh, they are hungry and they have acted on their hunger. And like I said, while, while deprecating, while condemning in the strongest of terms the wholesale disruption that took place in this country from Lagos to Taraba to Akwaibom and the rest, of uh, property even belonging to the government and uh, private, especially private properties. But when it comes to the issue of the palliatives, the palliatives were brought, were, you know, uh, were, 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 were there for the people, were provided for the people, uh, passed through the, the government, federal and state governments, and obviously the political class or the politicians felt that it would serve a better purpose to keep it locked up and not have okay. uh, give access to the people. And the people having discovered that these things were there, they decided to make use of them. That is not theft. This is something that belongs to the people. And I think I would, under any circumstance, I would support the, uh, you know, seizure uh, of uh, this uh, 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 COVID palliatives for the purpose of feeding the long-suffering people of uh, this country. Okay. So I do not see anything wrong with that. Thank you so much. Uh, let me quickly start with um, uh, Mr. Amechi, comrade. Um, a lot of people felt this directive needs to be clearer because um, giving it to Nigerians, a lot of people have accused the political actors, the, the politicians, that they were actually planning to give it to their cronies. They were planning to give it to their loyalists and not generally uh, the people who probably might need it more. Yes, uh, I think uh, clearly... He, even in support uh, to the first speaker on this matter, we are on the same page. And uh, thank God he was able to clarify that nobody would have assumed that government would hoard what was made as palliative, even at the time when it was needed most. So it came as shock to NSC, it came as shock to Nigerians, and I believe it came as shock to even all of us here. 
And therefore, the advice that is being given by NSC is to the effect that we frown at it. And that is why it is difficult to blame the hunger people who actually uh, went for the food. Because <laughs> there's no reasonable person that will be looking for warehouse to carry rice. But uh, all of a sudden, hunger has led people into following a shortcut that may not be legitimate. But eventually, if truly it was meant for the community, and the community have come for it openly to say this is our food, we're taking it home. It's difficult for any government to apprehend that, and it's difficult for anybody to stop. So for us, it is a, it's not, they are not supposed to wait for any advice. For every government to save their integrity, for any government to actually serve the purpose in which they are in governance, it is a matter of urgency that no warehouse should be found again storing palliative aid under COVID because that will amount to injustice, it will amount to wickedness, and uh, it may even affect such government uh, come next election because you can't use palliative items for, for politics, neither on your birthday, <laughs> because COVID-19 <laughs> is already levelled on it. And when this is given out at the wrong time, the message will implicate such government. Okay. So the advice is for the interest of government. Uh, I, I, I know that you fight for the masses and you're always on the side of the masses. But Comrade Joe, I, I, I probably just to continue the conversation because I do know what to argue with all of you is the fact that we see s some of them carrying four cartons of Indomie. You might say, what is that? It might be small. But the, the impact of this is that some will be denied. So should we not call spade a spade when we have people looting into warehouses when they were not authorized? Comrade Joe, are you there? Well, um, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Yeah, well, we can hear you. Go yeah. Ahead. We can hear you. Fine, thank you very much. Uh, let me just... Uh, let me make this clarification on Achude's uh, comment that is like crying when the door has been closed. No door has been closed as at now. As far as Congress is concerned, you know, every state must account for the COVID given to them. Every state. No excuse that it has been looted. What you are seeing people seem to be looting does not constitute 10% of the COVID allocated to the states. And Nigerians, including those going to cut away those COVID materials, have not attempted even a quarter of what was allocated to them in terms of monetary and material sent to the states. So I think they have to. We have gotten to the stage now that people have discovered where these things were hidden, that now each state by state must account for what was given to them. I equally don't believe that the people that were involved in this issue of cutting away with the COVID materials, you know, are the real people. They are not the poorest of the poor. Some of the people who are the, among the poorest of the poor cannot even come to lose. The people that were able to get something are the people who are strong, who can carry a bag of rice. Some of them we were able to carry four, ba four bags, three bags, you know. And if any government functionary went to pack it somewhere and it was looted, he must equally account for it. It is the duty of the government and their functionaries even to for, for the safe keep of this material. So I think we need to enter another stage. At the same time, there are states, you know, majority of the states, nobody have discovered where they kept, they kept some of their own items. And some of these items, you can see some of the politicians saying that it is the materials they bought for either their birthday or during festive periods. So where is the main materials meant for this COVID? I think we have to address it. And those are the points that the NLC was trying to address, that they must bring out those materials, they must bring out those palliative materials for proper accountability. And I think I stand by it. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, uh. I, I, and let me talk to Achike now. They've raised some critical issues. Uh, is there any need for us to distinguish state by state? Because Lagos State government seems to uh, have explained that this was a case of, oh, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Kako, Kako Vida, that's the name of the people, you know, given these things, have also exonerated these states that, oh, these things are in stages. Therefore, these things were not being hoarded. 
So do you think all these states need to give account like the union leaders have stated? Well, I mean, if something is put in your care, you must be able to give account of uh, those things that have been put in your care. But the reality is, I think that is, um, you know, uh, being idealistic, if you look at it from, because that is the right thing. So it is right to ask them to give account. But when you look at it in practical terms, it is idealistic because they have not even given account of their stewardship as governors of states. You know, I mean, the, the, the endemic corruption in this country that has gone on for years, especially you know, the, during the period of, uh, the, of unbroken democracy from 1999 to date, the stealing and the graft and the sleaze has been unprecedented in this country. And, you know, we know that they have not given account for it. They have not given account, you know, for the security votes that they have been getting every, every month and all that. So there's nothing new. So to ask them to, you know, give account, I think it's in order. But we all know that they are not going to give account of their stewardship. They have never done because of the culture of impunity in the country. Uh, I mean, in a country that is, uh, you know, endemic with corruption. That's, that is what you see. But okay. you see, the disciples are never tired of embarrassing and disgracing this country. And, and uh, you know, because, I mean, in the period of, uh, of uh, uh, social media, we used to say before that uh, the world is a global village. But... And the uh, social media even makes the world closer to, to, to us because we, the, it, brings it, it brings the world even to our own sitting room. Now, uh, what is going on, you see, is that all over the world, people are seeing videos of Nigerians rushing for food, breaking into warehouses, either looking for you know, uh, 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 COVID items or, 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 or taking them forcefully or, or willfully and all that. It's an embarrassment because okay. what you're telling the whole world is that we have gotten to a stage of absolute hunger, you know, where we now have to break into warehouses to steal in order to survive. So there is no end to the embarrassment and the shame that these people keep on bringing to the okay. country. Every other thing you talked about, I mean, the Kakobi people trying to, uh, you know, provide the excuse for the governors, the actions of the governors. I think they are just trying to be totally correct. Because in the very first place, there is a clear linkage between these people, the political elites and their elites, their elitist friends in the private sector. They have done well by providing these things. But the people that under whose hand they gave, you know, they put the, this trust to distribute this have not done well. And they know. And they know that they have not done well. But instead of berating them, they are business people. They, they, are, they depend also on government patronage. So we okay. understand the fact okay, that they don't okay. want to come down hard because of the government. Thank you so much. But I bet that... Let, that let, let, let me bring in other... Let me bring in other discussions. They are not happy with what has happened. Good. Your position is unambiguous about that. Let me quickly go to Amechi. Um, could this be the reason why NLC is saying release these materials, release these COVID-19 foliages? Because this might be a case of we have nothing left. It's been looted. There's no other better word uh, to qualify illegal means of uh, entrance to a place. And that is why we are calling it looted. The question is, in the first place, what do you also attribute to government action? Who, in the first place, uh, deliberately kept away what belongs to the people to itself? And that also uh, may be criminal in one way, because if what belongs to people eventually become for a person to either, either use for his birthday or otherwise, <laughs> that I consider uh, as criminal. And therefore, parties are, uh, uh, are guilty of one offense. And the question now is, release it to prove your innocence. Let it be open. Because like, uh, like uh, my brother talked about embarrassment, it's totally disgraceful that a country that is called the giant of Africa has, has resorted to situation in this very century, 2020. We are talking about uh, um, thousands of Nigerians going into warehouses, to see how they sell food for themselves is very unfortunate. But I think the truth remains. We can't give up. There's no way uh, I, will, I, will, I will admit that uh, accountability is optional. No, they must give account. And I want to encourage everyone that uh, in as much as we must continue to fight for justice, we must endeavor to be consistent in asking for accountability because where politicians see us uh, talk with weakness where we make statements that where uh, they may not, uh, then uh, they believe it's a culture. Okay. But whereby we demand what happened may happen again because all we need is a peaceful, legitimate protest to correct 
some of these wrongs. The fact that who lost a jacket was uh, actually uh, a, a mistake on parties, especially okay. on the security angle, who actually lack multi options of, of their strategies to engage, okay. how to differentiate Thank you, comrade. from uh, protesters. Uh, and my time is really gone. Thank you so much. Let me quickly take the last word from uh, comrade uh, uh, Jero. Um, a lot of people felt governors given 24 hours, 48 hours ultimatum to return these goods might be the way out. What's your take about what these governors are saying concerning these palliatives? Maybe on today, we retrieve those materials. That's when they can distribute it and listen to your directive. Well, I don't think that uh, the governors have anything to retrieve. Uh, the palliatives given to them, like we said, you know, must be accounted for. If you watch in the case of Lagos, in the case of uh, uh, Dogara and whatever, these guys are claiming that these things are the things they bought, you know, for certain programs that were looted. But we are now trying to find out where the ones that were sent to states legitimately, where the, the governors keep it. 24 hours may be too urgent, it may be too soon. But I think they may have up to one week to prepare their records and keep all these things. Because even the people who are calling hoodlums are the creation of the system. You know, there's nobody that came into existence or came into this life and is a hoodlum. No. There are the people who fail to either educate in school. There are people who fail to provide jobs for. Mm. There are some of the people who use for political purposes mm. and stocks. So they are equally entitled to these items. Although, you know, some of them got more than they expected. And if you watch what they shared, you know, it's not, it's not up to maybe 1,000 people per state. In a state where you have 20 million, hmm. you didn't get up to 1,000 people who went out to help themselves. So this self-help, and the governors cannot tell us that this item that we had made away with, okay. we have all the COVID uh, uh, materials. They still need to account for it. And I think we'll continue to demand for it. Okay. And that will construe the next level in the agitation. If the protest has been on this, by now it will have taken it another dimension. And a lot of things have been revealed as a result of the, the NSAS protest. Thank you so much, Comrade Joe Ajero, Deputy President, Nigerian Labor of Congress, Nigerian Labor of Congress. And we also want to thank uh, Comrade Amechi Azugini. I must say that uh, we've been looking for you all this while. It's interesting to have both of you you know, attend to us today. And that's a signal that we'll continue to have you on our subsequent programs. Thank you for your time. And uh, many welcome. thanks to Comrade, yes, it's also a Comrade, Comrade Achike Chude, for your time and for your intervention. Let me say, yeah. Aluta Continua. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, for our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now, very short breather. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take, especially on the first topic that has to do with the army statement. Please don't go anywhere. And here is my take. The latest from army is to underscore some of the gains of this protest where our leaders, I mean our servants, respond to us when we ask questions. Whether the answer is true or not is another conversation, maybe not tonight, as we'll expect untainted and unbiased findings from the panel of inquiry. There are still questions we can't wait to ask. Some of them include, will the army apologize to Nigerians and Nigerian media for accusing them of reporting fake news that the soldiers were not at the Lekki toll gate? Was the governor of Lagos State economizing the truth when he said that the army does not report to him when he indeed asked the military for intervention? I do hope the governor of Lagos State is not being used as a fall guy when indeed he didn't order military. While we'll appreciate the response of state actors, though late, we will appreciate it more if accurate answers are provided for keen observers out there. Till we get response to all these questions, 
Plus Politics will return tomorrow at same time on the same station. We'll keep our fingers crossed while we await these answers. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeindi, saying bye for now. <laughs>